Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. I'm very pleased to welcome you all to our webinar, Discover New Online Teaching Tools for Economics, exclusively for the Arab world. And I'm delighted to introduce our guest speakers and co-authors of Principles of Economics Arab World, Dr. Mohammed H. Rashwan and Dr. Andrew Ashwin. Dr. Rashwan is an Associate Professor of Finance and Economics at the British University in Egypt and a Fulbright alumnus at the University of South Carolina, Dalamore School of Business. Currently, he is Head of the Business Department. Dr. Rashwan has taught several courses in the field of economics, finance and investments at both undergraduate and graduate levels. Would you like to say hello, Dr. Rashwan? Hi, good morning, everyone. Nice to meet you all. I hope this session will be beneficial for all of us. Thank you. Dr. Ashwin is an associate lecturer in the Lincoln International Business School and the Lincoln Institute for Agri-Food Technology at the University of Lincoln in the UK. Dr. Ashwin teaches and supports postgraduates across a range of modules. He has an MBA in International Educational Leadership and a PhD investigating assessments and the notion of threshold concepts in economics, as well as being, a, being an experienced author. Hello, Dr. Ashwin. Oh, you're on mute. So about Al here and good morning everybody. And also presenting with myself today is my colleague and senior learning consultant Ahmed El Shawabi, who has a master's degree in learning technology and education from the University of Nottingham in the UK. Hi Ahmed. Hi Helen. Hello everyone. And my name is Helen Seymour and I'm the marketing manager for economics at Cengage. So please do submit any questions that you have on the Q&A and we'll answer these all in one go towards the end of the webinar together with the questions submitted when you signed up. And just quickly before we dive into the webinar, I'd like to mention that, that the first 20 people who have joined today will receive an Amazon voucher worth the equivalent of 15 pounds in local currency as a thank you from Cengage. So please do look out for an email with this prize if you're one of the first 20 people to join. Now our agenda for today's event is as follows. First, Dr. Rashwan is going to discuss some of the common challenges in teaching economics courses. Then to help you find solutions that can address these challenges, Ahmed will give us an exclusive demo of MindTap, our online teaching tool, for the brand new fourth edition of Principles of Economics Arab World. Dr. Ashwin and Dr. Rashwan will talk us through ways that they envision MindTap and its many interactive features could be embedded into your economics course. The authors will also present some of the brand new current content relevant to the Middle East in the fourth edition of Principles of Economics Arab World. As mentioned, we'll answer any questions that you have towards the end of the webinar, so please do post these in the Q&A and we'll address them then. And finally, I'll let you know how we'll be in touch to help to support you as educators in delivering the best learning experience possible for your students. So first of all, Dr. Ashwan, would you like to tell us about some of the challenges you've encountered in teaching economics courses? Yeah, thank you, Helen. Uh, welcome, everyone. And um, uh, thank you for this opportunity. So, yes, so when you talk about challenges, okay, so this is something that we face uh, every semester, every year, every academic year, especially when you, you think of teaching economics. Um, and um, um, we all uh, uh, share this when we come to a uh, new subject for the student. The, the, main, the main challenge actually that I personally feel that, uh, or, or, or encounter is um, the economics itself. Okay, so dry sometimes in the mind of the students, they have stereotypes of it's a dry subject, they don't know how to approach it. Some of them for, for the first time, uh, they will uh, listen or uh, discuss the, the, the economics topics. Um, some of them are afraid, some of them are that they don't like it, they don't feel attractive to it. The second uh, challenge that they always feel that the students coming from different backgrounds, so um, they are not all in the same level, they are not all uh, the same characteristics, so some of them get engaged from the first minute, others need more time, um, uh, and this take a lot of effort till and uh, consume a lot of time till you identify exactly how you will proceed with the course. Um, another challenge that you always face is, especially I'm teaching larger classes and yeah, average classes is like uh, 400 students, uh, how you follow, how you, how you make them that you are personally engaged and how you follow their performance and make sure they understand what you are talking about. And um, if this is, um, 
where is the weakness and where is the strengths and uh, how you can uh, build on this and identify the exactly your learner needs and gaps. Um, so this is you know, a personal challenge from a professor point of view. Um, and also what we always you know, know and face is um, the, the, a lot of topics in the economics are based on uh, mathematical backgrounds. In the introduction, it was it, usually it is simple. However, in, if it's an intermediate course or something, it is more advanced. Um, and um, the majority of the students are not feel okay with this. Uh, so, for example, if you introduce the first time how they draw graphs and the axis and the slope and this kind of topics, they are uh, sometimes panicked and they don't feel like they like this issue. They don't know how to approach it. You, you spend more efforts, you and your teaching staff and teaching assistant to make sure that you, you cover uh, a deep gap. Um, and finally, um, this, sometimes when it comes to the assessment, it is a big issue because first of all, um, um, you need to know um, during your teaching and your uh, the semester, uh, the, the exact level of the student, if they absorb this information, if they can understand it or not, uh, depend on the curriculum the university are working in. Some some curriculum allow you to have some assessments through the year, others are in the final. So uh, how to follow the um, this assessment thing and uh, um, if it is large numbers when you come to marking and you come to grading and give advice and feedbacks is a hell of a job. Uh, more or less, this is the, the main challenges that we face in teaching in general. However, in economics, it has become more and more challenging because the uh, mathematical background, the different background, the economic itself as a subject. So and I, I thought this is the main thing that I face with my students. Back to you, Helen. Thank you very much, Dr. Rashban, for those insights. Now, my colleague Ahmed is going to give us an exclusive demo of MindTap for Principles of Economics Arab World 4th edition, which has not yet been publicly released. So this, uh, this is our first ever customer demo. So would you like to share your screen, Ahmed? Thanks, Helen. I'm going to share my screen now. Can you see my screen now? OK. Yes. So uh, thank you. So uh, I'm going to start now. So uh, as we are looking now at the at the landing page in MyTap, the instructors and the students will land in this page. Uh, on the right hand side of the screen, we see that the instructors will see the, the class average. The students will see their own grades. Uh, on the left hand side, we will see the learning path. Uh, the students will not see these editing tools. These are for the instructors only, of course. So. Uh, for the students, uh, the main benefits uh, of my one of the main benefits benefits of using MindTap is that they have everything in the same place, so they don't need to go to different uh, place to get uh, any teaching material. If they open any of the of the parts or any of the chapters, any of the modules for the chapters, I mean, they will find all the uh, uh, teaching materials they need. As we see here, for for example, the, the chapter start by a, by a short video for the author. The author is giving an overview about the the chapter, then this followed by. Uh, the uh, knowledge check activity. So these two activities will introduce the students to the content of the of the chapters. Then the students can open the uh, chapter reading. So the reading here is embedded inside the learning path. The, the, the complete chapter of the title is embedded inside the uh, learning path. So the students here can start navigate through the content of the of the chapter. They can they can highlight. Uh, they can add notes. Uh, highlights and notes will be saved for the students in the in the study hub, so they can review uh, before the exams. Uh, also, they can use the uh, read speaker to listen to the wording of the of the entire page or to select a part of the of the page. Uh, so, backing up the uh, uh, reader, there are a host of activities and assessment tools that the students can go through for practice or the instructors can assign these, uh, any of these tools for them for assessment, for formative or summative as assessment or for assignment just for, for practice. So we have these uh, three folders to learn it, study it, apply it. This will be with, uh, with all of the uh, chapters. Uh, for example, I'm going to open the uh, learned folder for you. So here we have short videos uh, explaining the uh, main concepts in the in the chapter. 
then followed by uh, some uh, problem walkthrough uh, videos. Uh, then comes the, the other, I'm going to give you some examples on study it and apply it in, in a few moments. Then by, at the end of this chapter, the, uh, at the end of the module of this chapter, there is an, uh, like, a, uh, like a chapter summary and uh, the students here can uh, download this and use it. This is an, an, an excellent tool for a revision and also it has some helpful hints. So I just want to mention also that the students can access the, the, the complete content of the of the ebook from the uh, from the full book app, or also they can they can download Cengage app on their mobile or tablets and have access to the content of the book and other uh, uh, features on the uh, on the go on the tablets or the mobiles. So for the instructors, uh, one of the main benefits for the instructors is, is, is saving time. So the instructors. Uh, and this can be done by 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 different ways. I'm going to give you some uh, some examples now. So, uh, all of the uh, I mean, there's a large quantity of uh, curated content uh, uh, that the instructors can can use. This will save their time uh, that they might consume in generating new content for the teaching or for the uh, or, or for the assessment. Uh, uh, the assessment tools are auto graded, and this is very important as the. Uh, uh, for the this, I mean, this is one of the challenges that faces the instructors that they need to save time, uh, consume time in manual grading. So, uh, with each of the chapters, one of the examples of the uh, auto graded activity is the uh, the Aplia uh, assignments. These are auto graded activity. The students will submit their answers, and then the uh, uh, the students' submissions will be uploaded or, or will be populated uh, uh, here uh, for I mean in the, on the system. Uh, in the gradebook, so the instructors can open that progress app. They go to the gradebook. They can download it as an Excel sheet, or they can upload it on their LMS if they want. My tab could be also uh, could be uh, uh, that we can make like an an, uh, an integration between my tab and the and the LMS as well. Uh, also, the instructors can go to the analytics tab here. They can have a, a clue. Uh, they can have a look at this dashboard. They can know how the the students are doing. And they can also identify the students who might be at, at risk. Uh, another important uh, feature uh, for the uh, uh, for the instructors also that save their time that the students get immediate feedback uh, when they submit any of the assignments while they answer, while they answering the assignments, they submit their answers and then the system will give them a feedback uh, while they're doing it at home or on campus. Uh, also. Uh, uh, another important feature as well is that uh, the questions could be randomized, so the uh, the instructors don't have to worry about having different versions of the same exam, so that the students don't copy from uh, from each other. They just they can uh, the, the the settings of the uh, uh, of the of the, of the assignments as in Aplia could be adjusted so that the questions receive uh, different scenarios from the same questions. There is a higher level of randomization as well in C now, so we can create a pool of questions and like a pool of 100 questions and each students get 10 different questions out of the, of the pool. So all of these levels of randomizations could be, uh, could be also, uh, we, we can make it uh, for the assessments, whether the assessment is a formative or summative ass assessments, it, it, it depends on the settings. Uh, one more uh, one more features I just I want to mention as well is that uh, in the in the in the fourth edition we have added a, a, a new module in, at the beginning of the learning path uh, getting started module so in this module uh, there are a host of uh, uh, math and graphing uh, skills videos and also a comprehensive API assignments that the instructors can assign for the students in the beginning of the of the semester as we know in in uh, the the, the students coming to the economics 101, especially from different background, the mathematical skills might be different and the instructors might uh, spend some time at the beginning to make sure that the students are, are, are at the same level. So by assigning this module in the beginning of the semester, uh, we can, uh, we, this will help to make sure that all of them are ready to start uh, 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 the, uh, the course at, at, at the same time. So uh, these are some of the uh, 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 features of MindTap that help that help the instructors to, to uh, save time. Uh, another important feature in my, in MindTap is that it, uh, the learning path is uh, could be customized. Once we enable it, we can customize the content of the learning path. 
So we can change the names of the of the of the folders here instead of part one, for example, part two. I can name it week one, week two to follow the same structure of the of the course on the LMS. We can change the content of the content of any of these parts. I say, for example, I'm not teaching chapter one and chapter two. I'm only teaching chapter one, chapter two, week one. I want to move chapter three to week two. I can I can move it. I can hide the chapters that uh, that I will not teach or I can hide any uh, assignment or any activity that I don't want to my, my students to, uh, to to go through. So we have we have control over the, the, the content that uh, that uh, we want to make visible to the students as, as well. Uh, we can also uh, add content inside the learning path. Uh, uh, we can click on add create here and we can add any activities inside the learning path. And we can also uh, different types of, of, of activities could be added as well. I mean, we can add links to any uh, website or any uh, up, 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 updated contents I want to add. Say, for example, I'm using the book for the second year. I want to add some updates to, the, to my students. I can share uh, with them links to website or to any personal uh, content or, do, or to video. I can add videos from YouTube as well in inside the learning path. And I can also uh, uh, add some due dates as well to the students if I want to start to uh, give give them due dates to some of the of, of, of the activity. I can also add uh, uh, some due dates here, and also I can add a, a, a available date so to make sure that uh, the assignment will be locked before this date, and the students will be able to see all of the assignments they have from this view. Uh, if they have any assignment, it will be any assignment or any activity that has a due date will be visible here, and they can just click on it. Click on week two, for example. They have one activity. It will be due on the 12th, and uh, it will, it, it will, and, and the time that this activity will be due will be also visible for the students. Uh, we can also uh, add content uh, inside the uh, reader itself. So I can, the instructors can also open any of the uh, chapters. They can add uh, content inside. The, the, the same contents could be added anywhere in the page of, of, of the reader. Uh, and this feature uh, actually is widely used now by many of the instructors using MindTap. So they add for, for, for the students a video or uh, any comment. They can share highlights and notes also with the students. And then they tell them, OK, so next lecture, we're going to discuss some parts that I highlighted for you or some notes I have added to you. So the students will be encouraged to open the, the, the chapters and go through the content and come to the lectures uh, uh, ready for the, uh, uh, for the study in the lecture. Uh, Okay, so uh, two uh, two more features I want to uh, uh, to give you an idea about also as well in this uh, short demo. So we have uh, uh, the the graph builder activity, and these are in the study folder. So let me open one of the graph builders for you. So let's show it to you how it looks like. So as we know, uh, the uh, the uh, the graphing might be uh, might might be used might might be challenging for many of, of the students, especially those with weak math and graphing uh, backgrounds. They find some difficulties also in interpreting the underlying uh, economics pr principle be, be behind the the, uh, the graph. Uh, the instructors know that a, a good way or, or or like a good teaching uh, a practice to address this challenge is to give the students uh, the. Uh, the big picture first, the the whole graph, and then they and then they uh, uh, they will put it. They will uh, show them the steps that the, that the, the students need to follow to uh, reach the uh, the big picture. So, and this is how the design. Uh, this is how the uh, the graph builder was 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 designed. So the students first see the complete graph, and then they go step by step uh, at their own pace uh, through these uh, slides. So they can uh, reflect on each of the slides, uh, take their time, then till they reach the final or the complete uh, picture or the complete graph. And then the system will ask them to now you now you build it. So the students can start build the graph from the scratch using some of the drawing tools here, which is very easy to, to use. And there there are also some uh, support here. So the students not left without uh, support. They can click on show uh, the show the correct graph, they will see, they will compare what they did with the, uh, with the correct graph and they can get even further support by clicking on full, uh, 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 full, uh, the full explanation. And then they can try it again till they bec become uh, confident of, uh, to, uh, to draw this graph. Uh, they, can, uh, they can also, when they're done, uh, 
they can submit it for their uh, for the instructors to get even more uh, in, uh, individual feedback uh, from the instructor. So this is the graph builder. Uh, the second feature I want to update you about is the MobLab. Let me open MobLab library for you. So this is MobLab. Uh, so uh, Bob Lab are uh, online games uh, designed to bring the world of experiments in economics to the, uh, to the classroom so the students will interact. This is a synchronous activity. They will interact together at the same time in the game uh, and they will, uh, they, will, uh, they will learn and how the, how the economists use models and build theories and apply concepts uh, to the real world uh, issues like the, the, I mean in the environment of the game. It's an, it's an excellent tool that will engage the students with the, uh, with the, with, with the lecture, whether this is a uh, face-to-face lecture or an online uh, lecture as well. So the students, uh, as you see now, these, these are the games. The instructors uh, can select any of these games. The games are listed here and also listed under categories. We also uh, uh, we have a, a mapping guide that can map the games with the chapters. If we open any of the guide, any the guide here next to the game, we see the learning, uh, the learning, uh, the, learning uh, the learning objectives of the games and more information. Uh, these are the uh, these are the objectives that the games is designed to make the students understand while uh, playing the game. Uh, and then also the, the instructors can demo the game if they want. They, they can play against some robotics player. Of course, the uh, the more players we have, the better in these games to get a more a realistic results out of it. Uh, if the instructor is happy with the game, they can just select it and they can add it inside the learning path, uh, as 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 I did as I did below. And then it could be also it could be also has a due date and uh, assigned for the students. Uh, that will be all for today. Uh, this was a short demo. I just as you see, MindTap is a, is a is a very uh, customizable uh, learning tool. It would be. Uh, personalized in many in, in many uh, different ways i have i just show you today the main some of the main features of mindtap if you would like to see a more detailed demo please get in touch with uh, your Sengage learning consultant we'll be more than happy to give you a more uh, detailed demo that is tailored to your uh, personal and institutional need uh, thank you very much back to you helen thank you ahmed just um well, can everybody see my screen? Oh no, I'll just reshare it, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, thank you very much, Ahmed, for a brilliant demo. And it's um, wonderful to see so many exciting, interactive new features in the Mind Tap. Thank you, Anna. So, Dr. Ashwin and Dr. Rashwan, how do you think Mind Tap and the features and activities that Ahmed has just demoed could be embedded into economics courses? Uh, well, I think for me, um, I mean, you know, Ahmed has has, uh, has given a taste of there of, of what MindTap can do, um, but um, you know, the features and functionality uh, are incredibly detailed. And, and what I've been really impressed with is that the whole thing has been constructed with learning designers uh, in the background, so people who really understand how how students learn. Uh, and what they need to be able to maximize their learning. And, and those principles, I think, are, are extremely important. And uh, what MindTap does is allows me to be able to focus on my teaching uh, rather than worrying about sort of where I get all the content from, because all the content I could possibly need for a, um, a, a typical semester's course is there and more. Um, but um, what that does, it allows me to be able to customize uh, exactly what I uh, present to the students and and it and, and it doesn't look uh, like it's going to be a, a sort of Cengage separate um, platform um, I can customize it so that uh, it actually looks like my course uh, at my institution and um, as Ahmed mentioned um, because it's all edit editable rather than having uh, Mankey Rush one principles of economics fourth edition in the, in the in the top of the thing I can have my own institution name uh, and course and badge if I want to and and all the things that the students need are exactly what they require and they don't need to go anywhere else to, to get to get what they require so you know for, for me that customizable uh, options and, and, the, and the features and flexibility of MindTap 
um, are, are, the, are the thing that makes it so valuable um, for my teaching. Yes, uh, thank you, Andrew. Yes, I second most uh, of Andrew and uh, Thank you, Ahmed, for this uh, demo. The, um, the point is, uh, as Andrew said, the, the, the Ahmed demo is yani, very um, simple and uh, very quick, and actually it, it, uh, a lot of things other uh, than that. Um, um, I have been using this book for the last five years, and I witnessed the development of the feature during this uh, different edition. And uh, what I really do like now, you know, the most like features that uh, how can I follow the student performance and the response, the student response for the uh, topics building. It's uh, so this pre topic uh, introduction and quizzes, and they put put them into the action, and then the the, the, the features of the ebooks, the interactive ebooks, and how they can always go and for uh, any back and forward to revise the material to know this test. And now I can see all of these actions on my screen. Uh, in few minutes, I can see where the student level, what they finish, what they didn't uh, finish yet, what they are strong at, what they are weak at. Uh, Actually, the, the the most important feature, the new one that I do like and I plan to use it a lot, this uh, uh, allow me to add the updated cases and video and uh, action around us. Because as all of us knows, any book, any book in the world, after it come published, start to be uh, out of date. You know, it's, and uh, it's very dynamic uh, uh, topics and everything something new. So sometimes you want to bring this into the material. Usually what we do is to put it in a separate uh, file or document or slides on our uh, e-learning systems. But if you can now just put this case into this part so the student will link directly the theory with the practice in, in, in a moment, this would be um, a, great added, uh, added, uh, a great added value. Um, I, know, I, I know that Ahmed didn't uh, uh, mentioned this in his demo, but uh, also I would I, I like the uh, structure uh, resources, structure resources like structure manuals and slides and everything is ready for for me and uh, uh, to use it. Uh, so yes, I think in the, this feature hopefully will significantly improve in our teaching. Thank you. Back to you, Helen. Thank you, Dr. Rashwan and Dr. Ashwin. I hope that's been useful for everybody. Next, Dr. Rashwan and Dr. Ashwin will present some of the brand new localized and topical content that's in the fourth edition of Principles of Economics Arab World, which can also all be found within the MindSAP e-reader. Yes, okay. This is, I think, just a sample of what we were just talking about, that uh, updated um, features and cases, news in the new edition, the great work and the great effort that took years that we come to this final version and the Jesus yes, to give you a glimpse or a test of what is going on. As you may see, uh, this um, first case, he's talking about the um, oil and diversification of economic resources uh, in, in that's happening around in the, in the Middle East, especially in the Arab world and the Gulf area. And this case is introduced in the First chapter, and who of you that are familiar with uh, Mankirash one style that we start with uh, uh, 10 principle or 10 question, and we relate all the uh, book to uh, this question and this principle during the in every chapter. And here is just to give them just about what the scarcity of resources and the changing that is happening, and it directly linked to. Um, uh, what, what is going on in 2020, 2021. So just not a dry theory as before, just what they, they, they read the principle or the questions, students, and they have a case from the news around them so they can grasp uh, uh, what is uh, going on in this area. Uh, and in the second case here, is, uh, it shows the flavor of um, the, the, if I if may call it the region, customs and cultures, uh, and we talk here about demand and supply, and uh, the case here is explaining what is happening in the food sectors and beverage sectors in during Ramadan, which is the, the, the holy months in, 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 uh, for, for all the region, and everyone understands what is Ramadan, and everyone features what is Ramadan. So directly, this case relate the uh, Ramadan and the 
what's happening in Ramadan uh, to the, the culture wise to their uh, economic theory and talking about the demand and supply and have some uh, food prices go up, other go down, and even it concern, uh, um, concentrate on the different types of food across different countries because it's not all the same. Also, it is a common thing, but each country has its own uh, traditional and classical foods at that time. So, and it related to the uh, dynamics of the uh, demand and supply, which usually, uh, personally, I use it before they start uh, drawing the curves and choose the shift that is happening. And they always refer to uh, this kind of cases when it comes to um, relate the theory to the practice. Um, I think you have another example, Helen, to guess. Uh, uh, yes, and uh, this unique feature of this book uh, is different to all the Manqui books in uh, that we have a full chapter about Islamic economics and finance. And um, as if you are following the sector, it is a hot topic, it's always debatable, it's good, it's bad, what is a challenge, what is a barrier, how it adds to the economics. And we have a full detailed chapter which uh, captures the final, the updated mechanism and the contract and everything. And we write all the challenges and we bring all the um, practitioner opinion in a, um, a very any uh, simple way for the student and uh, this case is talking about um, uh, um, first of all it introduced the sector and what's happening on and then they took this uh, bank as an example uh, one uh, this bank is one of the top five in the region and and it, it, it relate again what we say about this sector and the, uh, the concept to a, a direct practice and open the student mind to what is going on in this industry and how, to, how it perform. As you may see, all the kids are supported with its respective links. So a student can go to these links and add. And actually um, my plan is to put these uh, links, uh, to add it directly, uh, more links related to the edgy topics into uh, using the, uh, the features that Ahmed just showed us to add links and activity in the uh, chapters. I think, uh, yes, this is some glimpse of the cases. Uh, back to you, Andrew. I think, uh, yes, you will talk about the in the news. Yes. Yeah, um, this is uh, this FYI uh, for your information is a, um, a part of chapter 30, which covers money and prices in the long run. And as technology develops, uh, what we understand as money is, is changing. And many of our students will very, very rarely use cash and, and tend to use their phones to make transactions. And to them, their phone is a, a form of money. So as our understanding of what constitutes money changes, uh, we felt it was important to recognize the, the, the growth of, of things like cryptocurrencies and to provide some content that questions whether they will be a more common feature of regular transactions in economies in the future, or whether they just represent a, a sort of passing fad. And so lecturers can use this type of article to make students think about their understanding of what money actually is and whether cryptocurrencies can and do represent a form of money. Uh, the second example we've got here is, uh, is in the news. Uh, chapter 33 covers the macroeconomic theory of an open economy. And one element of this is the issue of capital flows. And this is, can be quite a complex topic, but the pandemic has provided us with an excellent example of, of a sudden and severe economic shock. And, and as a result, provides us with a more up-to-date opportunity to investigate how this can affect capital flows between countries, particularly in the Arab world. And this is obviously relevant to uh, a number of Gulf countries because of the high proportion of migrant workers who send money back to their home countries. <clears throat> the pandemic had uh, impacted significantly on these workers as lockdowns shut down economic activity uh, and that in turn led to a fall in remittances. So the purpose of this specific new in the news example is to encourage students to use the models that describe in the chapter and apply real events to those models to help explain and understand the impact on foreign exchange and the market for loanable funds. And it then asks students to consider um, how GCC countries in particular might be affected uh, in the light of the fact that many of them peg their currencies to the dollar uh, or to um, you know, a, 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 an unknown basket of currencies. 
Thank you very much both. It's very exciting to hear about some of the great, um, great new content for the new edition. Now we're going to take a look at and answer some questions from the audience. So um, we've had two questions submitted at the point of registering for the webinar. We're going to answer these first before moving on to any more that have been submitted live today. Um, if you do have a question for any of the speakers today, please do go ahead and post it in the Q&A box um, or in the, the chat box. So the first question, which the authors will be best placed to answer is, how did you adapt the Mankiw text for the Arab worlds? Uh, well, I, I, as an author, I've had quite a lot of experience of, of adapting um, textbooks to, to, to different regions. But I think uh, for, for this particular uh, version, the, um, we had an editorial panel um, that uh, we used as, as reviewers and advisors. Uh, and working with, uh, with Mohammed, uh, it, it allowed us to be able to really sort of meet the needs, we think, of, of, um, uh, of, of those people. Uh, in the region that, that want to use this particular book. So the, 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 basics, the basis is that you take the, the core content um, um, that, that Greg Mankiw uses for his courses in the, in the US, and uh, you uh, keep the essence of, those, uh, of that content, but you embed it in the context of, of, the, uh, of the area in which you're, you're adapting it for, in this case, obviously, um, the, the, the Arab world. Um, you then take all the case studies and the, and the newsers, the questions and all the other uh, features around in, in the book and, and you uh, adapt those so that uh, they are localised content. So all the case studies are about local issues, uh, all the news articles are about local issues and, and, the, and the, the content of these local issues were often informed by, by reviewers. Uh, so Mohammed and myself may have, may have written a case study um, in, in a chapter that was subjected to review and reviewers might have said well yes this is fine but you know you need to consider this or um, it would be much better if you included uh, information about about that and we were able to then sort of uh, amend uh, the, the, our sort of authoring as, as a result of that so I, I think that that review feedback um, has been a particular feature of, of, of this edition more so perhaps than than any other uh, adaptation that I've worked on. And I think gives it a real strength because uh, a lot of the content uh, adaptation has come from um, the requests of, of those people in the region that want to use this type of material. Yes, um, totally agree. It, took, it, it reminded me with the, all the work that all the mails and all the uh, reviews of the other uh, colleagues. Um, in the Middle East and in the Arab country, usually uh, all our economics, when we use any books, um, it use examples and cases. It is just it is not only not relevant uh, to the to to our country, but sometimes it is you know embarrassing or use some examples that give the structure any real time. And that's why if you have uh, any uh, Western published, if I may say, books, you need to go and review exactly your slide, change the name, change whatever examples you think it may be appropriate or uh, fitting in the culture. Now, this is totally gone actually from the first page you get into, if, if you think that this book is designed in this uh, specific uh, region. Um, uh, not, not to mention all the technology features that uh, Ahmed gave us a glimpse about it. Uh, it's really a change I think um, this is my, my personal feedback and the feedback that I always get of all my colleagues around uh, from different uh, universities that change how we teach economics and how we can now put these uh, ideas and topics uh, for the student. The book is live, it's updated, it's interactive, and this is something I need huge and a significant advance. Thank you. That was a great question. Um, the next question that we have is, what do you feel is the most beneficial feature in MindTap for economics courses? Um, this is so hard again, one. Think... Sorry? This is hard one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so many. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, I mean, the, the um, yes, this is really, I, 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 mean, I think all the, all, all the options, uh, all, the, all the new features is good, but I do like the new one of adding these live cases and I always feel in love with the um, uh, class reports about the assessment because it saves me like 
days, not hours, days, perfectly. many days, and it's a huge, especially people who teach for a large group know what I'm talking about. But all the features, you know, more than excellent. Uh, for, for me, it's the customizability, um, the fact that I can make it appear um, that this is something that has been created specifically for my students and for, for my institution. Um, and, and it doesn't look like uh, an additional platform that students have to navigate, um, that the whole thing can be uh, embedded into the, the, the learning management system, virtual learning environment. Uh, and, and, it's, and it's just a seamless operation. And uh, I, I think that makes it incredibly valuable. It's something that um, you simply cannot do with, uh, with lots of other technologies and certainly not with a book. Thank you both. Uh, now let's just take a look at the Q&A. Um, so we have one question and um, which is when will the book be available? So apologies, I probably should have actually mentioned that. So um, the book and MindTap um, and the ebook published on the 15th of December. So, um, so not long to go. Um, next question, can students in other business school majors like accounting and finance benefit also from the book? I think once again, I'm going to pass that over to the authors because they'll be able to um, answer that better than me. Um, so Dr. Rashwan, Dr. Ashwin, the question was... Yeah. Yes, uh, can you see the question again, Helen, please? Yeah, so can students in other business school majors like accounting and finance benefit yes. authors in the book? Yeah, sure, 100%, because in, uh, in any business, actually we taught this in business department and uh, in economics department in our... Uh, um, in, in our faculty, the, in any business program and economics is like a core courses. So actually, whatever your curriculum is based on British or American or whatever, it's based on uh, economics as a core courses. And uh, so this, we call it in the um, principle of economics. And if you look to the uh, book title, it gives uh, the basic and the first principle economic that you should actually need to uh, take uh, move further if they need to take an intermediate or advanced course and the answer is yes it is it's fitting for all the majors and actually um, um, it, it, it taught in different uh, in different department so um, I'm, a, I'm doing a visiting professorship now in Hamburg University I'm teaching this book actually into law student as an introductory economic laws uh, economics because they need to take a like an economic course, so in all business measure and in uh, uh, um, non-business measure too, if it is an introductory level. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I mean, I, I, yesterday I was teaching um, a, a group of postgraduate students uh, some, some work on forecasting and scheduling um, in the agriculture and food industry, and uh, I was actually using uh, some elements of MindTap uh, within uh, that particular session uh, to cover some uh, basic principles about demand and um, uh, and then linking that to demand forecasting. Um, so th there's an awful lot of, of information. And again, because it's so customizable, you can actually sort of um, you know, hide the material that you don't want students to see, um, but make sure that the, the material you do want them to see is, is there and available. And that, that's part of that um, uh, incredible functionality and, and features that MindTap provides you. Great, thank you very much both. Um, there is another question asking um, if I can open the, the mic for them to ask a question. I'm not actually sure if I'm able to do that, um, or perhaps you could try raising a hand. Um, I could see if I could do that. If not, I would just, I would just type your question um, in the Q&A. Oh, raised hand. Hello, hi, how are you? Hello. There hi. You. Hi. Hello. hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for this wonderful um, presentations. Um, uh, this is uh, Salim Neshi from Qatar University. Uh, I have, a, you know, uh, I mean, two questions. The first one is, you know, we always uh, struggle with having Arabic versions. Uh, I mean, not Arabic word versions, but Arabic textbooks. And uh, contacting the publishers in this, now there is a high demand for Arabic textbooks, especially in economics. Economics is, is a core course taught for so many, all business disciplines across the university in many majors. And we always have this issue of having 
uh, Arabic textbooks. So I don't know whether if we, is it possible to have these translated versions of the Likmenkwi or other textbooks, like the publishers usually have this argument. If you have a commitment to have a specific number or the textbooks, or there is a demand for it, then we can uh, do it. But it's like when, what comes first, is the egg or the chicken. So we, if they're possible, the publisher like Sengage can take this initiative and move forward and make like this wonderful textbook available in Arabic. And then I'm sure there is a high demand in across the region, especially in the GCC countries, all universities are now are opening Arabic programs. And so there is high pressure from the society to open this Arabic uh, teaching uh, tracks. So this is my first question. The second one is also about case studies. The regional case studies are always a challenge for us. Well, it's true that the textbooks available, we see some you know, flavor in the, but sometimes, uh, you know, there's a lack of quantity as well, you know, you because you, you have large sections, you want people to work on different cases. That's also um, one thing. And also, um, one last comment is about the experimental, you know, economics. I mean, if we can see in the, some flavor of the experimental economics in the textbooks, I see in many universities now are doing that. In the GCC countries, we still, don't have access to you know those materials with such you know a nice field of economics. They put some uh, experimental economics in here and there in some chapters. Um, that's it. And thank you very much again. Uh, well, if, if I could come in first of all on, on your last uh, comment about experimental economics, um, um, uh, Ahmed uh, demonstrated the mob lab activities, and and this is specifically the reason why. Um, those have been included in the mind tap for the for, for the new edition. Um, the, the, these these are um, uh, almost perfect examples of, of how you can bring in experiments, live experiments, into your teaching uh, on on a regular basis, covering a, a wide range of, of different areas. And uh, um, you know they 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 really re reflect the sort of the, the trend over, over the years of, of economists using experiments to uh, develop new models, test theories and so on. And uh, so I, I, I think that you know, is, is something that uh, would be extremely useful uh, and valuable for you and, and addresses that question. Um, with, with regard to the uh, availability <coughs> as a, um, in Arabic, um, you know, this, this is something that, that I believe that the publishers have considered. Um, and uh, it may well be that, um, uh, that Helen uh, might be in a better position to, to, to address this. Um, but as you say, it is very much chicken and egg, and we are talking here about economics, and um, uh, we have to have that demand for um, this particular type of uh, adaptation to, uh, you know, to, to, to make it viable to be able to do. Um, but, it, but certainly, um, Helen may, may uh, wish to have a, have a comment on this. Uh, but I, I do know that one of the one of the challenges um, is uh, with, with with something like MindTap as, as an example, um, getting that translated is 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 um, is challenging because of the amount of, of um, technology that goes on behind it. Um, but um, um, certainly, uh, you know, Arabic version of the textbook may be something that um, uh, that Helen can comment on. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's that's. Um you know, a brilliant and extremely relevant point raised um, that we'll definitely take on board, um, you know, look into, into the feasibility of that because, you know, obviously we, um, you know, we produce a, um, an Arab world specific um, product. We want to make sure it's as relevant and useful, you know, for the region as possible. So that's, um, that's really, that's great feedback and it's, you know, something that we'll definitely take on board and we'll have to look into the feasibility, of course, but, um, you know, thank you very much for, for bringing that up and yeah, certainly look into that. Yes, um, I have a quick comment. Um, and thank you for these uh, questions. Uh, for the case, the regional case thing, the, um, the, the added activity is very helpful. So uh, whatever case you find in the news or in the web or you feel this can be fitting, this is you can add, add for one section like two, three cases or two, three the news or topics that is related. Uh, and it goes all the, all the time you can add and remove uh, because um, uh, what we try to do is to fit as much as we can the new uh, the application cases and the news as we showed in uh, topics. But uh, as I said, this is my introduction. It is always dynamics. Things change. 
Uh, and this is a brilliant feature, actually. And thank you for all your comments there. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks to everyone who submitted questions and asked questions. Um, apologies, we are running slightly over, so I just have one final slide um, just to finish off with. Um, so just to let you know that if you haven't opted out um, out of receiving communications from Cengage, your local learning consultant will reach out to you about a personalised demo for your course um, and to find out if we can support you in any way. And everyone who signed up for the webinar today will receive an email with access to the recording, which, of course, you can share with any colleagues who might find it helpful. And if you have any other questions or feedback, please do drop us an email at emea.higheredmarketing at cengage.com. And of course, um, Amazon vouchers are on their way to the first 20 people who join the webinar today. So look out for the prize in your inbox. And finally, I would just like to say thank you very much to our guest speakers, Dr. Rashwan and Dr. Ashwin. Thank you, Ahmed, for a brilliant MindTap demo. And thank you very much to everyone who joined our webinar today. And I hope you found it helpful. Thank you, Helen. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for joining.